rights and the history of discrimination, how we address those with civil rights or legal protections against discrimination. We're going to start with LGBTQ groups. Um, one of the biggest issues for gay, for gay couples back then, when I was growing up, was same-sex marriages. I know right now this is not a big deal for your generation because it's kind of a settled debate. Um, very few of people of your generation disagree with same-sex marriage, but when I was growing up, this was a big issue. Um, it wasn't until very recently where many politicians um, were public about their support for same-sex marriage. This is the reality when I was growing up. Until 2015, same-sex marriages was a state issue. State government were allowed to decide for themselves whether or not they will recognize same-sex marriages and whether or not they will give marriage certificates to gay couples. So it's a state issue. It's about federalism back then. So states like Texas that you see in brown right there, they did not recognize same-sex marriages. They also did not give out marriage certificates to gay couples. So here's how it would work back then, right? You can be a gay couple and you can marry in California, and the California government will, will is going to recognize your marriage. But if you go on vacation on, in Texas, for example, the Texas government does not have to recognize that marriage as legally binding. So it depends on the state back then. Any questions? So it was a state issue. Um, in the 1990s, the US government even went further um, in their opposition to same-sex marriage by passing a law called the Defense of Marriage Act, also known as DOMA. The Defense of Marriage Act defined marriage as far as the US government is concerned as only between one man and one woman. So marriage was defined by the US government as only being between one man and one woman, which means if your marriage is outside of that definition, the US government does not recognize that marriage. So you might have been married in California by the California government, but the, as far as the US government is concerned, if it's not one man and one woman, it is not a marriage. That was DOMA. Divide marriage for the federal government as between one man and one woman. For some of you, this might not be a big deal, right? Who cares if you're married to somebody, whether or not the government recognizes your union or not, if you love each other, why does it matter? Once you get legally married to somebody, you gain benefits and privileges. Like for example, when you're on your deathbed in the hospital room getting ready to die, the only people allowed in, if you don't give, if you're not allowed, if you're not able to give permission, are your family members. If your state, if you're a gay couple and your state does not recognize your marriage, that person is technically not family. So you could be dying and your husband or your wife wouldn't be able to say goodbye. So these are things that same-sex marriage can get you, right? But again, for a lot of for a lot of states, they deny that right to same-sex couples in the United States. In the military, there was a policy for a long time in place, especially during the Bush administration, it's called "Don't Ask, Don't Tell." Um, it's not that you're not allowed to be gay in the military; you are. You, as a gay serviceman, you can sign up and become part of the military as long as you keep it a secret. So you can be gay as long as you're not openly gay. Once your superiors find out about your sexuality, they can kick you out of the military. Again, the government promises it's not going to ask about your sexuality as long as you don't tell anybody about your sexuality while you're in the army, while you're in the military, your place there will be safe. But if they find out, you can be kicked out. There were horror stories back then of gay servicemen that thought they were like opening up to their friends in the military they come out with their friends and then they turn around and report on them and they get kicked out because of them. Now, I don't care about your opinion about homosexuality, whether or not you think it's good or bad, or whether or not it's moral or immoral, right? But these people volunteer to die for you. How many of you can do that? I'm a coward. I'll never go to the military. I'll never volunteer. I can't do this. But back then, we were kicking them out because of sexuality. So don't ask, don't tell is a military policy that prohibited gay servicemen from revealing their sexual orientation, being open about their sexuality. Any questions so far? But things are going to get better. In 2015, just about eight years ago, all of you were alive then, 2015. The Supreme Court made a very important decision. It's called Obergefell versus Hodges. And 
Obergefell versus Hodges, they decided that a state that denies same-sex couples the right to be married or does not recognize same-sex marriage is committing an act of discrimination. We talked about in this class how if a state commits discrimination, it violates what portion of the U.S. Constitution, what amendment gets violated when the government, when a government discriminates against another person. The 14th Amendment and the Equal Protection Clause. So the Supreme Court decided that denying same-sex couples the right to be married is a violation of the 14th Amendment, which amounts to discrimination. That's why today, same-sex marriage is not as it used to be. They declared DOMA as unconstitutional. That law we talked about, one man, one woman. And states are required to recognize same-sex marriages. So it's not a state issue anymore. It doesn't matter whether or not your state wants to or not. Your state has to recognize same-sex marriages and have to allow same-sex couples to be married in that state. Whether or not this is a good idea or a bad idea, that's up to you. But this is currently what's law in the United States. What gay couples are afraid of, since the overturning of Roe versus Wade, if they can do it to abortion, they can also do it to same-sex marriage. So this can be in danger now that we have a more conservative Supreme Court, like I was talking about before. Any questions? All right, let's move on. This is one of our most controversial topics today, um, the topic of affirmative action. Affirmative action. Um, is something that some of you here will be a beneficiary of. In the 60s, the universities around the country figured out that disproportionately, there are not a lot of people of color being admitted to universities. The reason why is most of them don't meet the requirements like white students would to be able to be admitted into a university. And the reason for that is people like you, people who are of color, you were born with certain disadvantages because of historic racism, because of systematic racism and discrimination. When a white person was born and a colored person is born, they don't, they don't have the same advantages. So by the time they graduate high school, right, white students have better grades, white students have better GPA, they do better on the SATs, that's why they get admitted into colleges. So affirmative action is an attempt to kind of help out groups of people that have been historically disadvantaged in the past to kind of correct this, this injustice. So here's how affirmative action works. When a university considers a student application, those of you that are applying for college right now, this is what they're doing, or some of universities anyway. They're considering many factors, including your GPA, your SAT scores, your extracurriculars, but in some university, they also consider what? race. They also consider what race are you from. And being a part of a historically disadvantaged group is a positive in a lot of universities. It's uh, something that you can benefit from being part of these historically disadvantaged groups. Give me some groups that have been historically disadvantaged in the past. Native Americans. Very good. Who else? African Americans. Who else? You guys. Hispanic Americans as well you are all beneficiaries of these affirmative action programs. So if a university has affirmative action in place in their admissions process, it means that being a part of these historically disadvantaged groups is a positive for you. So if you're part of, if you're Hispanic, like most of you here, African American, Native American, it gives you a leg up. So here's how this would work, right? Government incur, um, programs that encourage minority women um, college admissions and employment. College admissions and employment. It also applies to some professions, not just colleges, but when people talk about affirmative action today, they usually refer to college admissions. So colleges today are able to use race and sometimes gender, they also consider gender sometimes, in their admissions process. It's called racial conscious admissions as a criteria for admission in order to promote diversity, there's an advantage to affirmative action. Number one, it made campuses around the United States more diverse. So when you get into a campus in the United States, not just white men, right, walking around, you're exposed to other experiences, you're exposed to other types of culture, and there's an educational value to be diverse as a campus. And opportunities for disadvantaged groups. Opportunities for disadvantaged groups.
here's why I said this is controversial, though this sounds like a good thing, right? But many people in the United States, especially the conservative side of our country, they oppose some of these affirmative action programs. Here's why. Let's say we're an admissions office. We get two applications from two students, one white and one black. They have the same SAT scores, they have the same GPA, they have the same extracurriculars. What else can we consider when we're evaluating who to admit and who not to admit? race and we're more likely going to choose which one the white student or the black student yeah. probably the black student in campuses that use affirmative action they would give preference to people from these historically disadvantaged backgrounds so what's the what's the problem what's the problem this white student may not have gotten into that school because of his what of this race is this discrimination and if it is is it an acceptable form of discrimination this is something that we should have right again when you're growing up regardless of not whether you agree with what I said or not whether you agree with her action right take advantage of it because it's, it's for you guys right but a lot of people in the United States criticize affirmative action as being reverse discrimination it's a form of reverse discrimination against white students specifically and male students as well. Asian Americans like me, for example, we do not benefit from affirmative action as well. We're in the same boat as white students as well. Because apparently we don't need that help. Anyone have any questions before we move on today? What is the last one on number five? The last one on number five. Denying uh, states are required to recognize same-sex marriage. Oh, sorry. Don't ask, don't tell. Um, you're forbidden from revealing. Was or was repealed by Obama, allowing gay servicemen and women to serve openly. Open. All right, guys. Today we're going to do something different. Instead of a quiz, we're going to do discussion on civil rights issues. Some of them I previewed on Monday. Those of you that did your work on Monday, again. No phones right now. Try to listen to people and give them the respect that they deserve. The more you participate today, the better your grade will be. Aim for about three or four times today, or a hundred. All right. First scenario would be the voting age. Many people in the United States are pushing for a lower voting age. A lot of people want to lower it to 16. Um, whether or not that's a good idea or a bad idea. Go ahead and talk about it. Anybody want to start us out? Go ahead. Uh, uh, I believe that, or I want to agree with the lower the voting age because uh, everyone should have an opportunity to do a vote at a young age. But if I were charged, I would uh, make them meet certain criteria. For example, if they have to be very knowledgeable on the government. So you would make them take a test? Yes. Like what the South did to African Americans? You make them take a test? But only the younger people will have to take a test. Uh, well, or would you have that test for everybody? Uh, well, if for younger people, because they could like, uh, I guess the government would fear because like the sub touch that like, voting and whatnot. But uh, so let's say I'm 32, right? Would you make me take that test? Are you able to vote? I think uh, like me as like a government, I would be your well educated. Well, let's say I'm a regular 32-year-old, right? You don't know me. Should I take a test to be able to vote? No. Okay. Just people who are 18 and lower? No. Okay. Uh, I don't agree with the word the voting age because people younger are not mature enough to take hard decisions. So probably they shouldn't. Do you think people your age are mature enough? Not really. But, but why should they vote then? The ones from 18? Yeah, people like your age. Well, like 18 or 19. Because that's like it, the shift from from being a child to the adulthood, so we can analyze and process better the decisions. Okay. Anybody else on this one, the deer, and I'll go to you. I think it should be lower, but like uh, the what? Uh, the voting age is 16, but I believe if it's a viewer. Or younger people to take a certain test, whether they're interested in voting, rather than just 
forcing you to vote. If you feel like voting, they can take a test in order to see how knowledgeable you are about voting. So same question, yeah. only those people are going to take the test? Pretty much. Only people with the LFD below 18. Okay. Anybody else? I'll go ahead. Uh, also, don't think it should be both, uh, lower because like 16 year olds feel like a lot less of a dream. I feel like an 8 year old. I don't think it should change. Why? Like, You're not mature enough? Are you mature enough? I'll are you 18? So, honestly. No, I'm 17. So when you turn 18, are you going to be magically mature enough? Probably not. But like, well, why should you go then? Most people, like, that's when they start maturing. Do so. you think most 18 year olds are mature enough to vote? Uh, Look around here, right? Would you trust these people with the right to vote? I didn't even lie. Yeah. But like, most of them. Anybody else? Go ahead. Yeah, I kind of agree with him. He 
said, because I feel like if the law says that you're not allowed to vote at a certain age, I feel like you wouldn't care or even like uh, wanted to see. Like, why would you want to learn about politics in, like at a young age if you're not even going to be able to vote? I feel like if they lower it down, people would get like more, uh, they would start early. That's what churches do, right? They like, yeah. catch you early. Never leave. All right. Uh, talk about affirmative action. Uh, the thing that we talked about right now. Uh, how many of you would agree that affirmative action should be a thing, right? Considering race as a factor when they're admitting you to kind of promote diversity and opportunities for people who have been historically disadvantaged? Or how many of you think that this is too much discrimination against whites? Anybody who want to say something on this one before we move on? Um, I support it. Why? Um, been proof over the years discrimination. They just want quality of work. Um, what about for whites? You don't think it's do you think it's discrimination first of all? Um, no. That's fine. Really? I don't know, it's just the team 